Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, have you ever played one of those mental games where you look at two pictures and you're supposed to figure out the difference or differences between them? Usually games like that are targeted more towards little children, so maybe it's been a while since you've played one of them. This morning, however, I'd like to play a game like that with you. You might be disappointed. There's no pictures involved. I figured it'd be a little impractical to hold up two pictures here at the front of church and expect people in the back to be able to see the details, much less tell the differences between them. So instead, I want to put before you two statements that God the Father made about Jesus during his earthly ministry. And I want you to pick out the difference between them. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to make this extra tricky, kind of like those pictures where the difference is so minuscule you almost need a magnifying glass to find it. Let me give you the two statements. Statement number one from Jesus' baptism. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And statement number two from Jesus' transfiguration. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Told you it wasn't going to be too hard, right? What's the difference? It's that extra little phrase, listen to him. It's a very small difference, but it's a very significant difference and a very significant detail in the transfiguration. And so this morning, we want to focus our attention on that, that little phrase, listen to him. We want to focus on that little phrase because it helps us to find benefit and value in Jesus' transfiguration still today. Now, without a doubt, Jesus' transfiguration is one of the most visual events from our Savior's ministry. In fact, even the way that Matthew was inspired to record this event just seems to invite us to picture it in our mind's eye. The Holy Spirit directed Matthew to write, And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. That's a short description, but it's packed with words that help you envision that sight. And it was a pretty glorious sight, wasn't it? So glorious that it'd be easy to get wrapped up in what was going on. And that's exactly what happened with Peter, isn't it? He got wrapped up in that glorious sight. He was so taken in by that glory that he said when he saw it, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter was so overwhelmed with the glory and goodness of that sight that he wanted to stay there, right? He was willing to build those tents for Jesus and those two special guests to remain there. Peter said, it's good that we're here, Lord. Why was it good for Peter to be there? Probably sounds like kind of a dumb question. I mean, it's pretty obvious why it was good for Peter to be there. Jesus was shining with the glory of the sun. There were those important guests, Moses and Elijah, two of the most important figures from the entire Old Testament. Why wouldn't Peter want to stay there on that mountain? But you know, there's there's maybe even another reason why Peter thought it was good to be there on that mountain of transfiguration. Do you remember how at the beginning of this gospel lesson, Matthew told us, that this transfiguration happened six days after something else. That kind of invites the question, what, what was that other event that happened six days before the transfiguration that, that dates the transfiguration? Well, it just so happens that six days before the transfiguration was the very first time that Jesus told his disciples that he was going to suffer and die on the cross. When Peter heard that, that wasn't so good to his ears. In fact, Peter's first reaction when he heard that Jesus was going to suffer and die on the cross was to rebuke Jesus, to tell him he was wrong, to say, that's never going to happen to you, Jesus. Peter thought, it's good to be here on this mountain of transfiguration because there are no enemies to
to crucify Jesus in sight, there are only friends and supporters. It's good to be here on this mountain of transfiguration where there's no pain and there's no suffering. There's only Jesus in his glory and his goodness. It's good to be here on this mountain of transfiguration where the cross is far below and far away. It is good that we are here. You know, Peter was right when he said that. It was good for him to be there, but, but not exactly for the reasons that he had in mind. In fact, it's at the very moment when Peter opened his mouth to say how good it was to be there and expressed his desire to stay there by building shelters. Well, it's then that God added his glory. God the Father added his glory to this glorious sight. And God the Father opened up his mouth and explain to Peter why it was good for him to be there and to see this transfiguration. And that's where that little detail from the beginning of the sermon comes in. God the Father said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It was good for Peter to be there and to see that glory because it drove home that, yes, Jesus was indeed true God. It was good for Peter to be there and to see that glorious sight, to have driven home to him that Jesus was doing exactly what his father wanted. But it was especially good for Peter to be there and to see that glorious sight because it drove home to him that he should listen to Jesus. He should listen to Jesus because when Jesus opened his mouth to speak, he spoke with divine authority and divine approval. And so even if Peter didn't always like what Jesus said, it was important for him to listen to Jesus. And that would be even more true when Peter and James and John and the Savior went down from the mountain of transfiguration and Jesus went to the cross. As Peter saw Jesus suffer and die, that would not look very good or very glorious. And yet, if Peter listened to Jesus as the Savior went to the cross, he would hear how that suffering and death were in fact the very best and most glorious things that Jesus would do. By listening to Jesus, Peter would learn that the Savior would draw all people to himself by being lifted up on that cross. By listening to Jesus, Peter would learn that the reason Jesus would lay down his life on that cross was to make a ransom, a payment, for the sins of men. By listening to Jesus, Peter would learn that the Savior went to that cross in order to win eternal life for people condemned to eternal death. Most of all, by listening to Jesus, Peter would learn that what the Savior did on that cross was for him. And so yes, it, it was good for Peter to be there on that mountain of transfiguration and to see that glory, to learn to listen to Jesus. It is good that we are here. It's amazing how, how true Peter's words are for us also. It's good that we are here this morning hearing about Jesus' transfiguration. It's good that we are being reminded to listen to Jesus. After all, while it's true that you and I may not have seen any sight nearly as glorious as the sight that Peter saw, we do tend to do exactly the same thing that Peter did. We tend to evaluate God's goodness and glory by what we see with our eyes. For instance, we can think that things are going well at church when the pews are packed and the offering plates are full. We like to see signs of glory and goodness like that. But then when the pews around us don't look as full as, as we'd like them to, or we look at the, the numbers for the offerings and they're not quite where we would want them to be. 
it can be very easy to become anxious and nervous and even worried about what might happen. Or when, or when things go well in your life, when you finally get that promotion you've been working towards, when your relationships are all going really well, it can, it can feel like God is just smiling on you with his blessings. But it can be just as easy to have doubts about God's love and his care when you're not exactly sure how you're going to manage all the bills or, or you're just struggling with a particular relationship or maybe you just don't know what's going to come next in your marriage. There are times when we find it awfully hard to fight against what we see with our eyes. And so it's good that we are here, and that's precisely the reason. We, too, need to learn to listen to our Savior Jesus, to trust in what he says rather than to trust in what our eyes see. And that's because the same cross that marked the life of Jesus, it also happens to mark the lives of God's people as well. In fact, it's interesting, that that was also one of the things Jesus said six days before the transfiguration. He not only said that he was going to the cross to suffer and die, but Jesus also told his followers that whoever would come after him would have to take up the cross and carry it as well. In other words, they could expect to see a lot of sorrow and a lot of misery and a lot of trouble in this life. And so we, too, often look out at this life around us and we see things that make us anxious and nervous and upset and afraid. And that's why we, too, need to learn to listen to Jesus. Because then, because then when we see those failures in our lives that make us feel so guilty and ashamed. And we know to listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus as he assures you that that your wrongs have been washed away in the waters of baptism as far as the east is from the west. Then when you start to have doubts about your life and even question whether your life has any value or meaning to it, listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus assure you that you are precious and valuable because he paid for you with his blood. Or when you you feel like your labor at your job or in the home are just nothing but wastes of time, like the daily grind is just something that has no value to it. Listen to Jesus. Listen to him say that your labor in the Lord is not in vain, that rather when you work Out of faith for your Savior, you really are working for that Savior God, and he sees that work as precious and valuable, no matter how insignificant this world sees it. Or when you have to face suffering and pain, listen to Jesus. Listen to him assure you that he has fixed limits for every pain and every trouble, and that he also guides and directs all of them so that they must work for your good. Or when death itself leaves you feeling helpless and hopeless, listen to Jesus. Listen to him assure you that because he lives, you also will live. Listen to that Savior assure you that there is nothing in all creation that can separate you from his love. So, listen to him. It's a very small difference between what God the Father said at Jesus' baptism and what he said at Jesus' transfiguration. But even though it's a very small difference, it is a very significant difference. God grant that we would always learn to listen to Jesus rather than to trust our eyes. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.